yesterday we talked, you know, we had a pretty deep lecture about perspective. So keeping on with the theme of our perspective change, today we're going to talk all about really being grateful, okay? Because remembering all of the blessings we have is a key to actually being happy, right? Like, I'm probably gonna completely butcher this quote because I don't actually have it written, but there's a saying that says something like, happiness is being content with what you have, right? Like, we don't always need to want more and want more and want more. It's okay to work for more. There's nothing wrong with working for more, and many of us are working for so much more because we still do have larger dreams. But it is critical to our happiness that we be content with what we have now. Being content with what you have now doesn't mean you're settling. And it doesn't mean that you're not continually moving forward and progressing and growing. But it does mean that you value and appreciate what you have right now. So today's lecture is going to be talking about ways to remember to be grateful, how to be thankful, and how to incorporate that in our everyday. One of the first things I like to do, and it's hard when you're short on time, but I like to actually do it on my phone, is to keep a gratitude log. I have, in the little notes app on, on your phone, I have a gratitude log, and it literally will be, you know, text messages from Nathan that I've copied and pasted into there, uh, pictures of the girls, funny sayings that they said, an incredible memory from, you know, a fantastic dinner I had with friends, anything like that. Like, I keep very detailed memories of those things, those times that made me so happy. I, 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 I log it so that I can look back on it because sometimes we forget the the good things, especially when they were small good things, you know, a sweet comment somebody made or a gesture, you know, some someone made, we tend to forget those things and we really focus and remember the negative. I think it's, I really do think it's a protective mechanism. You, know, you don't want to remember just the bad things, you want to remember all of the good things. And so keeping a gratitude log is just another fantastic way to remember how blessed you are and to remember how good you do have it. Even when as I said, you may be having a particularly bad week or month or even year. Know that those things are temporary and make sure that you have good memories and good experiences to remind you of how blessed you are, okay? Now the other practice in, in being grateful is to actually, and, and to be able to log those things and remember those things, is to actually be present when they happen. And I know that's a hard thing to do when you're running a mile a minute. But you need to remember to slow down now and then and really soak up those times, okay? Really be present when you are with your children or with your husband or with your friends. Be present so that you can remember those fantastic things and so that you can log them and look back onto them, okay? So remember to just be present. We tend to have a rule and, and obviously we break it all the time, but we still try to stick to it and it's that when we're together, our phones are solely for taking pictures, you know, our, our phones become our new cameras, but we're not using our phones to be checking social media or texting other people when we're together, okay? It's a fun rule, again, like I said, there are definitely times that we break it, but um, it's helped us become so much more present when we're all together. The final thing I want to share with you guys is a key, key, key little shift in wording that has made such a difference in my life. And it is being able to say, I get to, instead of, I have to. So many of us, especially if you're on track or you know on route to trying to balance it all and have it all and, and you just are carrying a million and one things on your plate so many of the things we do start to feel like have to's oh, I have to go to work oh, I have to pick up the kids oh, I have to get dinner oh I have to do the laundry oh, I have to pick up a gift for this birthday party oh I have to I have to, I have to, I have to. 
And maybe you do. Maybe you've been incredibly blessed with the responsibility that you do have to. Or that it's expected for you to do so. But I want you to take I have to out of your vocabulary. Okay? And I want you to replace it with I get to. Because you need to remember that all of this is such a privilege. I get to go to work and take care of sick people. You get to go to work and practice law. Or you get to go to school and study chemistry so that you can become the doctor that you want to be. You get to go to the store and use your own hard-earned money to buy food to provide for your family. You get to do that. You get to get into the car and take your children to something. Okay? You get to. What a privilege it is. Don't feel like all of these things are horrible responsibilities weighing you down. And some of them may truly feel like that. And if they feel that way, find a way to cut, cut them loose, okay? You don't need to feel heavy in your roles and responsibilities. If you can cut them free, cut them loose. Because we don't want things that are really, truly dragging us down. But for many of these responsibilities, the simple change in saying, I get to, instead of I have to, is enough. Okay, even for me, there are days that Livy wakes up early and she is so excited that she got to see me before I go to work. And she doesn't want me to go to work, you know? She wants to play and have breakfast and cuddle up on the couch. And there's nothing more I would rather do than to do that with her. And she says, Mommy, why do you have to go to work? And there are plenty of times that I want to say, Mommy has to, but that's not what I want to teach her. I don't want to teach her that you feel like you just have to do something because you have to. As much as, yes, I do have to. Because I have a responsibility to my patients. Because I need money to actually pay for food. <laughs> I do have to, but my answer to her is that mommy gets to take care of all the people who aren't feeling very well today. Mommy gets to help make them feel better. And that is just, she totally gets it. She's, you know, she, when I come home, she wants to hear about all the people that I helped. She is one of those helpful reminders to remember what it is that fills your cup, you know? Like, I want to be able to tell her at the end of the day who I helped. You get to, not you have to. Okay? Hope you guys love this lecture and we'll see you again tomorrow.